Lieutenant General Richard Newton now uh, to talk about this. Uh, let's begin with Finland, since that's where we left off with Kelly. Uh, Lieutenant General Richard Newton, always good to see you. So Finland signaling interest in joining NATO. Russia, as you heard, was quick to respond to that. Your thoughts on this latest, as I said, pretty significant development if it were to happen. Well, it is significant, Marty, and, and good evening. It would be significant because now it would be the 31st member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Uh, think about this, 20 years ago, uh, I think it would have been unfathomable for the population of Finland to consider you know, joining NATO. Uh, but since the invasion of Ukraine by Russia back on the 24th of February, my, my numbers tell me that the polling now among the Finland population, the adult population is up to 53%, which is really a dramatic change from the last five, 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, and so as Kelly reported also, uh, there have been aircraft intrusions, fighter aircraft intrusions over the skies of, of Finland, but also Sweden. You know, Sweden is lurking out there as well. Both nations and especially Finland has a very capable military that would be very suitable aligned with uh, the capabilities within the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So again, it, it's there are many, many steps to get there, but it's certainly one that I think is, is, is dramatic and, and absolutely noteworthy. And as we look at the map there, General, 800 miles or so that Finland shares with the border of Russia, given Russia's military capability, what we've seen them do uh, stymied in much of Ukraine for the last six weeks in certain areas, is an attack on Finland or Sweden or Norway or, um, heaven forbid, anywhere else if they continue to, to look to push, plausible? I think it is. Uh, and that 800 mile border, by the way, is not only border that's ground, but also air. So there's lots of air defense that has to go along that border as well. But I think not only should we be concerned about about Finland, of course, but but the Baltic states writ large, uh, and uh, certainly Poland. Poland has, I think, 330 miles or so border uh, on Ukraine, and so there are there is concern in NATO. My sources tell me that uh, not only within Ukraine, but also within the Eastern Front, if you will, where we have put a lot of defensive capabilities there because of the, the most recent invasion. So that's that would be in play as well. So think Finland, obviously think uh, the Baltic states, particularly Poland. I guess what I was getting at is about 15 to 20 percent of Russia's military um, might has been diminished. They're, they're in Ukraine. Their focus is there. Are they capable militarily for another ground battle like we're seeing in Ukraine in another bordering country like Finland? I mean, the, the logistics of those challenges. They're not. And I wouldn't think in terms of a ground invasion, but certainly they, they have air capability. Got it. Uh, they also have cyber capability. And so uh, we have to think not necessarily the ground domain, but the other domains, especially in air and cyber. But they do have certainly the will. They do not have the capability, I believe, right now because they are bogged down and significantly committed and spent, if you will, uh, with this Ukrainian invasion for the moment. So that probably has put them back a year or two. But let's not take the air capability off the table or certainly cyber. Yeah, anything's possible, I hear you. Uh, General, the Donbass region is bracing for this next massive attack that does appear imminent. It's setting up to be the biggest and bloodiest battle yet. What are you hearing from your sources tonight? I'm hearing that the Russian forces are uh, they're resetting. They've moved into Belarus. They've also moved into Russia. There are still some forces committed, but they, they've lost Kyiv. They, they're not going to take Kyiv. So they're now going to refocus, uh, re-strategize, if you will, and, and move into the, uh, the eastern part of Ukraine. And let's not forget the southern, southeastern part of Ukraine as well. But nonetheless, what we saw today, earlier today, that pinpoint attack on that train station. Think of Chicago's Union Station being attacked and 52 people, men, women, and children, and elderly killed as they're fleeing from a war scene. And so the change that we're seeing or the really upping the ante of the civilian atrocities will just intensify while the Russian army resets and, if you will, reloads. Mm, it's the epitome of evil, uh, really what Zelensky alluded to earlier today, uh, the atrocities we're seeing. General, before I let you go, many um, are talking about this May 9th day, marking that on the calendar. Why is that day significant for Vladimir Putin and for Russia? Well, that's the uh, the Russians' victory war parade. And if you recall the old granular black and white pictures of Stalin waving at the crowds and Khrushchev and Brezhnev and so forth, that with, with Putin being such a historic uh, focused person on the old Soviet Union, I believe we just need to kind of 
really keep an eye on that date as we march towards over the next month now. The 9th of May will be significant, I believe, for Putin to pull something else out of his, you know, out of his back pocket in terms of uh, either atrocities or maybe start an invasion or restart the invasion and so forth. Uh, we need to just, I'm just coming up on the net and, and letting the American people know that, that that's a date that's coming, that it could compel Putin because of the historic significance of that date and his marker on his legacy with this invasion that hasn't gone so well, uh, may want to put that date uh, in play and it's just, just more to, uh, uh, we'll see on that note. Yeah, about four weeks from now in the picture, he looks to paint for the Russian people and for the world at this point. Uh, Lieutenant General Richard Newton, always a pleasure to have you on. I appreciate your insight once again tonight. You bet, good evening, Marnie. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.